What's good, family? Welcome back to the Betting Exchange, live on MSG, where we make bets, debate bets, and tell you why our bets are the best. We got Katie, we got Eric, we got Jeff, and you locked into MSG Network Studios, and all the way in Vegas, giving us all the betting knowledge for the week and for today, Minty Bets, Yow Sports. Minty, how you doing after this wild conference championship weekend? I'm doing well. I'm still high off of this weekend. I had the best weekend ever, so I'm really pumped to start the week off with you guys. Yeah, you and Jeff got the Bengals. I know, Jeff's Bengals. I, we're, 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 we're Super Bowl <laughs> bound, baby. We we're go. Super Bowl bound, but they're also going against the Rams. I'm like, there's so many yeah. likable people on that team. I, I, I don't know which way to go, but I'm just so glad both of the spreads hit. It's been a wild, it was, it was a wild betting weekend too. Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I, my bets hit, which was great. My, my team <laughs> lost, which was not great. Unfortunately. It's a mixed bag how, of how emotion over here. How you feeling here. the day after? I think, you know, as any sports fan, you're disappointed, you know, and, and you, you think your team can go all the way and you're super excited about it. But at the end of the day, like, you can't wallow in it because if you wallow in it, then it discredits everything that your team has done and those players deserve more than that. Oh, yeah. And, you know, it, it was tough to watch Debo Samuel uh, oh. on the sideline. That broke my heart. Oh, my God. You know, he, he, yes. gives, he, gives, he, gives, he gave everything yeah. that whole season, you know, running the ball, doing everything, returning kicks, mm -hmm. and to come up short, that had to be disappointing. But uh, it, was, it was a great great season by the 49ers, yes. great victory for the Rams, yes. great job by the Cincinnati Bengals. I mean, yeah. they were outstanding. Oh, absolutely. The and I will say, all of our bets hit, because we were all on Niners plus a three and a half that hit, and you were on Rams money lines. So okay. we're, we're all <laughs> cashing in. And Minty, how about all of these time traveler bets that's been hitting as of late? I know you saw the, the $20 hit correct score for both games yeah. went for almost over half a million dollars. What, is, what are some of the other bets that you've seen out there that we didn't think that was going to hit and hit or anything that you've been seeing out in the field? I mean, I've seen a lot of crazy bets. That Those exact score bets, that parlay was crazy. But all I really care about, and we said it earlier, is the fact that the Bengals are going to the Super Bowl. Like, I've been riding them all season long. Yes. They were profitable as dogs. They were a long shot to make it this far. I mean, I had a futures on them uh, to win the AFC North at plus 350 and then to win the AFC at 9-1. to one. And I'm just really mad at myself that I didn't have a future on them to win the oh. Super Bowl. So... Here we are now. Minty, that is incredible, though. Kudos to you, but they, let's... They're the, they're the Mintinati Bengals now. The like, Mintinati that's, that's, that's Bengals. That's what they are at this point, the way you <laughs> run for them. I love, love it. it. Minty Burr. Okay. <laughs> All right, so let's talk some basketball. Let's get into the shoot around here. So the Knicks are hosting the Sacramento Kings tonight right next door at Madison Square Garden. And that is just one of the games on the NBA schedule tonight. So we're going to pass the ball around in the room here and talk some basketball. And we're going to take a bet on the Kings versus the Knicks a little bit later. So let's start with Minty. I got you first. So some trade deadline news with the NBA trade deadline fast approaching. Names like Ben Simmons and Jeremiah Grant have been mentioned as possible trade candidates. What team Teams do you see making a splash at the deadline? Well, certainly the Kings have been said to be the most aggressive in the trade market as they're going on the longest playoff drought in the league. Other teams that could be making moves at the deadline, the Pacers, they've got good pieces to trade. Uh, the Blazers, defense is really bad. And uh, the Celtics, I mean, offense lacks playmaking. So those are three teams uh, that I really like. And now I'm going to actually toss it over to Eric. Now, in the Eastern Conference, the top six teams are starting to pull away from the rest of the pack. Which teams do you, Eric, like at the top of the list of the East? Well, that's a great question. Yeah. There's so many uh, really good teams in the East. I mean, look at the Miami Heat. They're now healthy, and they're deadly. I mean, they play on both ends of the court. Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo do a great job on the, the defensive side. Uh, then you look at Chicago. You know, if Levine gets back healthy and get back to his old form, he and DeRozan are a, a, a great combination in that backcourt. And then with the Brooklyn Nets, when they finally figure it out, <laughs> I think that they can be a force to be reckoned with as mm -hmm. well. But, you know, I, I'm going to ride with the Miami Heat just because they're steady. Eric Spolscher is one of the best coaches. You always say he's one of the best coaches in the game right now. Yeah. So I'm going to go with them. And, and Jeff, I'm going to come to you. Uh, the Knicks. They got their trade uh, in, in early mm -hmm. when they got Cam Reddish uh, coming off from Atlanta. Why haven't you seen more of Cam Reddish on the court for the Knicks? Yeah, well, I, I think Tom Thibodeau alluded to it before. He was traded for Kevin Knox, who was also not in the rotation. So he's currently, by default, out of the rotation. Now, they're trying to find ways to get him in, whether they, unfortunately, they had blowouts where he's able to get a few minutes. But at this point forward, 
Tom wants him to take it, take it easy, take it slow, work his way back into the game, and hopefully there'll be uh, a way for him to get in there. Right now, uh, uh, Tibbs is running a nine, 10 man rotation, so I don't know if he's gonna be able to fit in now, which is why I think they're possibly not done. Mm -hmm. uh, dealing and they're gonna have to either open it's either gonna be injuries or spots are gonna have to be opened up through trade so stay tuned for that yeah. and katie yeah. i have the final question for cool. you uh we talked about the east now it's time to talk about the western conference it looks like it's a three-team race mm. at the top of the western conference which team do you like the best I still like the Warriors uh, to be the best. And I think they're the favorites still at DraftKings at plus 222 to, or 225 to win the division. And look, the Suns are super hot. They're right behind them. But I still believe in this Warriors team. And I think they have the most, you know, veteran experience in the finals than any of these teams really do over the last 10 years. They have played in 28 games in the NBA Finals. And if you look at the veterans on their team, Steph, Clay, Draymond Green, even Iggy, they've been there a mm. lot recently. So mm. I trust them to get this done, even though they're slumping a little bit. All right, real quick, let's get into tonight. What do we think for this Knicks versus uh, Kings game? All right. So I have Harrison Barnes over two and a half assists. It's at plus 100 right now. He's had at least two assists mm. in nine of his last 10 games and five versus the Sixers last in his last game. And the trend has been that players, especially when there's injuries, Fox may not play tonight. He's questionable. When players have uh, the second tertiary stars play against the Knicks, they have big games or some ah. type of career games. So I can <laughs> see Harrison Barnes getting over two and a half. Mm three or more and cashing in at plus money. Okay. Nice. I'm, I'm going to take the Knicks minus six and a half. I, I mean, the, it's not because of the Knicks. I, I think that they do have the potential to put together a good game, but the Sacramento Kings have been terrible. I mean, mm. they're two and eight in their last ten. Uh, Fox may not be playing tonight, and, and they just have been so inconsistent on both ends of the court. I think that the Knicks, R.J. Barrett, you know, they have some young players that can put it together today at Madison Square Garden and, and come out with the W. Yeah. All right, Minty, what do you think? Knicks versus Kings. Well, I'm liking the over here. Now, I know Knicks unders are money this season, but when you look at Sacramento, their defense is along the second most points per game and their third worst in defensive rating. Um, although the Knicks are a low scoring team, this tells me that perhaps New York can score quite a bit on the Knicks tonight or on the Kings tonight. Uh, so I'm going to take my chances with over in this game. Yeah, I agree with you, Mente. I'm taking the over as well. It's at 212 and a half. And I think of this as kind of like a get right game, right? For the Knicks, we've had a tough road trip versus very good Eastern teams. So I think that our stars are going to step up tonight and like you said Minty the defense for the Kings just isn't really there so hoping for a big get right for the Knicks tonight and uh, let's see hopefully all of our bets hit on this one. Yeah, Someone like right. Rashawn Holmes doesn't have a career game. <laughs> right. That's what, exactly right. what You're watching the betting exchange be. live on MSG. Next up it's Monday motivation and nobody needs it more than me. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere.